Good morning. So the galette de sarrasin, so the Brittany crepes, we're gonna put those together today. It's super simple. I mean, it's, it's not a recipe. It's just a system. So we're gonna do like whatever, whatever quantity I do out of the flour, I'm ultimately gonna do the double of water. So I'm gonna do, I don't even know what I've got here. So I'm gonna see what I have. Let's see, I have a hundred and, so that's 150 grams of buckwheat flour that I ground previously. So I'm going to put 300 mils of water on that, and then I'm gonna put plaster crap over top of it, and I'm gonna throw it in the fridge until this evening. What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow it to ferment. Um, even though it's in the fridge, it's gonna ferment. You can do like 24 hours, you can do eight hours, you can do 12 hours. Ultimately, you're just getting a larger fermentation time. You know, you don't wanna let it go for three days or something, but you know, within 24, even probably 36 hours. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna give it a little bit more um, complexity so that, and more texture so that when I do put it onto the crepe maker, it's not just uh, like powder water, which is what this would be at this point. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pour it into the water. We're gonna do 300 grams or 300 mils. I do tend to give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure that the flour um, does go below the surface of the water because it is the water that is allowing it to ferment ultimately. So there are some chefs who say, oh, whatever you do, don't touch it. But I do. Um, I've never noticed that it made a, a difference. And I did have one time where it went because I hadn't, I mean, I think the, the, the powder would ultimately soak in and go through the surface, but I just prefer to happen from the start. So I've got this nice mixture and then I'm just gonna film it. So we just want to make it airtight so that it's not open to new oxygen all the time. So let me see if I can get this. This is the trickiest part actually is the saran wrap. <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna plastic wrap it. Cut. Okay, so once that's on, then I'm literally just gonna throw it into the fridge and then I'll come back and show you once it's this evening. I'll show you how to make some Brittany crepes. Whoops, sorry, forgot the salt. I'm gonna do about a half a tablespoon of salt for that quantity of um, flour and water. So I've just opened the film put the salt in. It's true that a uh, very, you know, just flour and water gives you a very bland crepe, but just to have a little bit of that salt in there makes all the difference. All right, see you later. Morning. So I've got our buckwheat um, mixture out of the fridge and I've just stirred it. I didn't do anything else to it. I've got my crepe maker beside me here. And I've put together some parchment paper that I've just put into little squares because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the crepes onto here. I'm gonna, once they're cooked, put them on here and separate them with parchment paper. And that way I can keep them all week. So typically with your crepe maker comes uh, a couple of tools. You've got one small ladle, which usually has a nice lip on it to pour properly because sometimes ladles are shady that way. And you'll also get this tool, which is gonna allow us to spread it out nicely to make a shape. Uh, you know, you want it to be fairly rounded. So I'm just gonna do that. I've got, I've got, I've not put anything else in here. This is just the buckwheat flour, the water, and the salt. And it's been fermenting in the fridge. I'm gonna pour a nice quantity into the middle, and then I'm gonna spread it out. And it does kind of stick a little bit. It's going to be a nice small crepe. 
And so then I'm gonna to wanna to get a nice wide spatula, something like that. I'm gonna leave it until it's clearly um, already a little bit dry <clears throat> on the top, which will tell me that it is dry on the bottom. And it will bubble a little bit because they're, you know, it is creating the, the heat pockets. And then once it's, <clears throat> once it starts to um, lift up on the edges is when you know that you can flip it. And once I do flip it, I, uh, I don't leave it for too long because it is cooking through the whole time and it's very thin. So we just want to get a good, you know, kind of a browning on the other side. That's starting to lift up. There it is. <clears throat> so it's got a nice kind of a golden shade to it on the one side. And that's what we're gonna try and make on the other side as well. And now we just keep going, keep going, keep going. And like I said, I'm just going to sort of create a stack of them here. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a stack of them where I'm gonna put a, a crate and then a parchment paper, and then a crepe, and then a parchment paper, and then a crepe, and then a parchment paper. So, you know, you do this when you've got a radio show to listen to, or a podcast, or whatever, because it does take some time, and you are kind of handcuffed to the machine until you get through all of the, the batter. But uh, it's certainly an easy job. It's not very labor-intensive at all. And then there it is. It's a beautiful buckwheat crepe. So that'll be number one. And then I launch into the next one.